Grade 12. Today we'll look at how to collect data. The first step in data collection is to define the question we want to answer. Once we know this, we can choose the data collection type that best suits the type of data we want to collect. Data can be classified as categorical or numerical. Categorical data is data that describes a property, for example race, gender, types of cars and yes or no responses. Numerical data is data that consists of numbers. It's data collected mostly through counting and measuring. The number of rhinos, shoe sizes of learners in a class, ages and mass are all examples of numerical data. We further classify numerical data into two groups, namely discrete and continuous data. Discrete data is data that consists of numbers that are individual values. This means that the data only has whole numbers and no fractions or decimals. Continuous data is data that consists of numbers that can be any value. This includes fractions and decimals. An easy way to remember how to determine if data is continuous or not is to ask yourself if it's possible for your data to be a fraction or decimal. If the answer is yes, then it is usually continuous data. Once we've chosen the type of data we need to collect, we need to choose the collection method. Data can be collected using observations, interviews and questionnaires. Observations are typically used to collect categorical data, like the types of cars people drive. This data would be collected by an observer. Both interviews and questionnaires rely on a set list of questions. The way questions are phrased can influence how data is collected and the results of the investigation. These questions should be short and easy to understand and should not express the personal feelings of the researcher. Where possible, the questions should have multiple choice answers. It's very important that the data is not biased or misrepresented in any way, otherwise we cannot form valid conclusions. The word biased means to show favor for or against someone or something unfairly, and also to influence someone or something unfairly. The word misrepresented means to mislead someone or something, or to give a false account of what happened. Shortly, we'll join three friends who are collecting data on their classmates' monthly allowance, which they will present to their parents. With enough data, they will be able to justify an increase on their own monthly allowance. But this all depends on the questionnaire used to collect data. Using data collection techniques they have learned in class and with the assistance from their teacher, they design a questionnaire and choose a sample of classmates to give it to. Let's join them now. There she is, guys. <laughs> Afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Is there anything you'd like me to help you with? Yes, please, Mrs. Masimang. We've put together a questionnaire to see what allowance the learners in my grade get each month so that we can try and persuade our parents to give us a raise. We wondered if we could check our plans and the questions we asked before we hand out the questionnaires. Yes, of course. It's a great idea to use maths to convince your parents to increase your allowances. You do know that data from a questionnaire can be interpreted in different ways. So you need to know which questions you're going to ask in a questionnaire and who gets to answer them. What steps are you going to follow? I thought it would be a good idea for Zindi and Tabo to ask their teachers for help by calling for volunteers to complete our questionnaire. They would obviously all need to be getting an allowance and they would take the questionnaires home and bring them back completed the next day. In this way, we'd only be targeting learners who get an allowance and we'd also be doing our best to get the questionnaires we hand out answered and returned. Seems to me you have a clear focus on how you are going to approach your investigation. How many completed questionnaires are you hoping to collect? Well, there are more than 200 learners in our grade. We estimate that less than half of them will get an allowance. So we thought that between 30 and 40 completed questionnaires would be enough to make a good argument. Do you think we have enough learners? I'm glad you're thinking about the number of learners. You don't need to ask everyone in the grade to answer the questions, or even everyone that receives an allowance. There are some interesting words we use to describe the groups of learners that are involved in your investigation. We call all these learners who get an allowance in your grade the population. 
I thought population referred to the total number of people living in a country or a city. You're right. The idea is exactly the same. Population refers to the total number of people or animals or flowers in a certain area. But we narrow down the population when we collect data for a particular purpose. So for your investigation, you are not looking at all the learners in South Africa, or even all the learners in our city, but only at the learners in your grade who get an allowance. Now remember, you are not attempting to give the questionnaire to all the learners in your grade. You are selecting a few to represent the population. We use the word sample for this group of learners. The sample is the group of learners in the population chosen to represent the whole population. You need to make sure that your sample size is big enough to represent the whole population. Between 30 and 40 should be a big enough sample for your population. You must also make sure you select the sample randomly to give a fair reflection of the whole group. A sample that isn't representative of the whole population will give you biased data. What other plans have you made? Well, we thought we'd share our findings with everybody who participated in filling in the questionnaire so that they could use our arguments to convince their parents they need increases too. I'm sure it will give them a good motivation to return the questionnaires you give out. Let's have a look at your questions. Well, the first question is quite simple. How much money do you get as an allowance each month? We've left out a space for the learners to fill in the actual amount they get. I like the way you structured this question because it allows you to collect the exact amount. What is the next question, Lebu? Our next question is, Estimate how much of your allowance you spend on entertainment, tuck and snacks, toiletries, stationery, savings, and gifts. For this part of the questionnaire, we want to know what learners spend their money on. We thought that some learners may be getting more allowance because their parents expect them to buy more stuff with their money. So we decided to put together categories based on the things that we spend our money on. The categories are Entertainment, which includes movies, music CDs, games, DVD hire, books, sports events, and parties. The second category is tuck and snacks. This includes cold drinks, chocolates, sweets, chips, popcorn, and takeaways like burgers, chips, and pizza. The third category is toiletries like deodorants, hand and body lotion, cosmetics, hair products, shaving cream, and razors. The fourth category is stationery, mainly for school. Pens, pencils, erasers, sharpeners, exam pads, books. In the last category, we have savings and gifts. This question is very clear. I think you could add one more category and call it other and ask the learners to specify what they spend their allowance on that doesn't fall into the categories you've chosen here. That's a good point. I think the data you're collecting from this questionnaire will be very interesting. Let's analyze the factors to consider when designing a questionnaire. A good questionnaire will have a simple, short and easy to understand questions. For example, the question, do you get a large monthly allowance, is not specific enough. 200 Rand may be a large monthly allowance to one person, but not enough for another. Let's explore a better way to set out this question. How about this? The amount of allowance that you get from your parents monthly is, please tick where appropriate, less than 100 Rand, between 101 and 150 Rand, between 151 and 200 Rand, between 201 and 250 Rand, and other. Please specify. It is a good idea for questions in a questionnaire to provide enough response options. The questions must be simple, short and easy to understand. Provide enough response options and ask relevant questions. If we want to research the monthly allowances, asking someone about their favourite TV show would be considered an irrelevant question. A good questionnaire should include a short introduction explaining the purpose of the questionnaire. It should have a logical flow of questions, and it will be laid out in an uncluttered way, making it easy for someone to complete in about 10 minutes or less. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s, and remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Advanced Data Handling Tasks video. 
You'll also be able to learn more about data handling on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.